we have to understand that in God's kingdom and being Christ followers and in him, we are tools in God's toolbox. And we think that we know best, but God is the master craftsman. And he says, Nineveh needs to be reached, and the best person for that is this person. And if God knows best, who are we to say that, it's, it's as if we say that, God, you don't know what you're doing. You picked the wrong person. Are we going to be used by God? Are we going to be the tools that he's created for us because it's all about him? And it's not about us. It's not about our insecurity. Sometimes we say that we're not smart enough, we're not good enough, we're just going to mess things up. Sometimes we base a, base a Nineveh experience on a past Nineveh experience. God called us to do something, and we went and did it, but we didn't see the payoff. It didn't make sense as to, I mean, we, we say to ourselves, surely that couldn't have been God because there was no payoff. There was, there was no outcome. Sometimes God chooses to, to, to be, um, you know, have people to come to immediate conversion or, or whatever it is, there's an immediate outcome. But a lot of times... It's a piece to the puzzle, and God uses different pieces to accomplish His purposes. And even though we don't see the, the payoff, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't continually be obedient to what God calls us to do. In 2 Timothy, in the New Test Testament, chapter 1, verse 7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Many of us at different times have felt the challenge from God to go or to do or to say whatever it is that he's calling us to do, but we, we never, nothing ever changes. Well, if nothing ever changes and that's you, you're running. You're running. So why do we run so hard from God sometimes? A lot of time it has to do with pride. We are celebrating our own excellence. We think we know best. And a lot of times it's just based on unfounded fear. A second question that we have to ask ourselves when we look at Jonah is, where do we end up running to? Where do we end up running to? Now Jonah decided to run by going to an unplanned Mediterranean cruise. I mean, he was just, he bolted, man. He was out of there. He's like, that was back before Carnival was even in business, man. He's like, I got to figure out how I got to, you know, can get out of here. And, and more than ever, in terms of location, it's easier to move about the country, so to speak. You're now free to move about the country. I mean, we can run and run and run. And a lot of times we choose to do that. And one of the reasons that we run is because of self. Because of self. Our selfishness. Placing ourselves ahead of God. We so much focus in life about our achievements and our goals and our dreams, and are, and are, and are, and we fill in the blanks. A lot of times we have an idea that God is some cosmic energizer battery to give us the energy that we need to be able to accomplish our stuff. The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. When you seek God first with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your mind, all these things will be added unto you. Those are your goals and your dreams and kind of your stuff. But so often we get that in reverse. We seek all these things first, and that's all we seek. And we seek that, and we seek that, and God's like, hey, over here, here I am. We need to seek God, to be seeking God, not to get anything. The, the byproduct of that is God gives us things, and he, he, he loves to you know, bless us with this and that and the other, but we're about seeking Him. We should be about seeking Him, and honoring Him with our lives, not being selfish. It's not all about us. It's not all about you. A lot of times, um, in addition to our self and selfishness, we just want to escape we just want to escape. doesn't matter to where. We just want to get away. Calgon, take me away. And we turn to so many things in our escape, and a lot of times it's comfort. 
And sometimes you hear about comfort food. Some, some people really take that to the extreme and they find comfort in just eating, eating, eating. Others, it's just uh, culturally, emotionally numbing distractions with media and games and hobbies and all this other stuff just to, just to be busy so you don't have to really think about what God's called you to. So we run to comfort, but a lot of times we run to safety. It's like it's dangerous over there. God must not know that they're cutting people's heads off over there, skinning people alive and hanging the skins of those people up around the city gates. God must not know those details. My son, my two-year-old, and parents, you've played this with your kids, hide-and-seek, right? It's a favorite game. Well, the funny thing about my two-year-old, his name is Joshua, he thinks that if the cover is over his head, that nobody in the world can see him. And we play along, Joshua, where's Joshua? You know, he laughs, he pulls the cover over his head, back from over his head. There he is, there he is. You know what, as adults we continue to play the game, but we change the rules. We hide from God, and we seek our things. We hide from God, and we seek our things. Psalms 139, verse 7 and 8. It says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. So where do we end up running a lot of times? To our stuff, our self, our selfishness. We also run just to escape. Anything to escape, anywhere to escape. Let me just get away, get away, get away. The third question that we have to ask ourselves as we look at Jonah chapter 1 is what's going to stop us from running? What will stop you from running? I've learned so much being a parent about God and His love for me, but I've learned so much about me as well in my relationship to my kids as my relationship with God is. Kids are so funny. I mean, they're just hilarious. They do the funniest things. I think the biggest term that we use in our house is stop running. That's the phrase, stop running. It's not because we don't want them to run and exert energy. I mean, yes, we want you to exert energy. But the funny thing is my two-year-old, he runs as fast as he can, but he's looking this way. And he's running and running and running. It's not that we don't want him to run. We just don't want him to run into that. And that's what's going to happen. And so many times what's going to stop us from running is we're going to have to hit the wall. Or we're going to have to be thrown overboard and be swallowed by a fish. And we're going to have to have this happen. Or that diagnosis happen. Or that accident happen. And God can use those things. But the plan is, the greater plan is, is that you would realize it before it gets there. God's saying, stop running. Stop running. You're going to hit a wall. Something's going to happen. Stop running. Stop running. Stop running. First thing that's going to stop us from running is obedience. Obedience to what God has called us to. Stop running. John chapter 14 and verse 15 says, If you love me, you will obey what I command. If you love me, you will obey what I command. Being obedient is not always fun, it's not always comfortable. But you know what? With my relationship with my boys, it's not always going to be comfortable for them to be obedient. But it is required for our relationship to be right. Now, the love is always going to be there. I'm not talking about the love. But in order for for that relationship to be right, obedience is required. It's the same with us in our relationship with God. Obedience is required. It's not a la carte, on the side if you want it. It's it's required. If we love God, we obey His commands. The second thing that we need to know and how to stop running from God is just forgiveness. Forgiveness. Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh because he was harboring unforgiveness. He was harboring resentment. As a matter of fact, he just assumed that they go to hell. Who do you feel that way about? That might be your Nineveh. 
That might be your Nineveh. 